Welcome back to Studio Chatter. We have talked a lot about the new year and making a fresh start. We are not done yet. Not at all. Welcome Connie Sokol, yeah. local mother, best-selling <laughs> author, and speaker, yeah. right? Yes, all of those oh, titles. Yes. Welcome. Thank you for taking the time today to come and Thank talk to you. us. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, and, and we wanted to kind of listen to your perspective on a fresh start, a new year, a fresh Fresh, fabulous you. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. yes. Because January, women just start feeling like, oh my gosh, now I've got goals to do, and I've got to exactly. lose weight again, and all of these things. And you know what? January is awesome. It is a clean slate. It's it 12 is. fresh, non-snow driven, plowed snow <laughs> months ahead of you. And, and you can go, wow, I've got this clean white sheet of paper that I can say, what do I want to do and become in the next 12 months? You can forget about last year. You can let that all go and now you've got something fresh and new. So I love it. Oh. Well, I'm curious to know, we were just talking about how the three of us are kind of in our different stages of 40s. Mm -hmm. So I'm 42, you're 46, you're 45, some awesome. of us still raising children, have all of these different things. Tell us how do you fit kind of into that phase and, and how it's impacted how you're advising others. No, oh, I wish, you know, like a, it's sage wisdom, but I don't have any. What's great is that I love, I find it when I synergize with women, I connect with them. Right. Because I love that, that you're talking about women in other stages. I am 51, love it, and the 50s are great. Oh, <laughs> You've got great stuff to come to. But I love, I love the getting older because you do learn from other women. And one of the things that I share with other women as far as going through through each stage is enjoy the stage you're in. I was okay. in my uber 20s, I was in my overzealous 30s, and then I was getting my tired 40s, and then 50, <laughs> I get more mellow. I'm still going like a banshee, but there's a mellowness to life of, I've understood really truly in my soul the need for me to not have to have Pinterest worthy living and just be able to truly be real and and rejoice in that not just say it and not just think it but to really feel it in my soul so you've got that to look forward to you probably already there you guys are way ahead of the game but but I think it's hard in our 40s we're still running a race we still feel that way and I, I have to say honestly 50s and, the, and from what I talk to women in their 60s you're still moving but there's this feeling of I know myself more and I'm content with myself more mm -hmm. and I'm content to sit back and listen a little more. You wouldn't know it from today, but I'm a little <laughs> more content to sit back and listen and go, really, I love that and not feel you got to prove so much all the time. Mm -hmm. so. how, do you think, how do you think women can love themselves through all that? Because there's hard times. I mean, your Absolutely. 20s, 30s, 40s, every decade is going to throw some curveballs at you. Absolutely. And I think it goes back to I really push this real living, real life, real solutions, real joy, real motherhood. This realness factor is such a thing. And I know Brene Brown talks about vulnerability. We talk about shame and overcoming that. But I think one of the biggest things is just being able to embrace where you are and, and own it. The greatest thing that women can do is, is own their moments, own mm -hmm. their fails own their falls, whatever it is, and just own it, laugh about it, laugh together, and be able to connect through it rather than be ashamed mm -hmm. by it. Mm -hmm. I remember I made this cake for my daughter's birthday, and it was supposed to be spa um, slippers. And it looked great for like five minutes, but I used the dollar store cotton candy. Mm -hmm. So they were, it was bright pink with this blue, and it was supposed to look all fuzzy, and it looked so good. And then it went like this in the air and crinkled. Oh. We still have a picture of it, and it is so hideous. They are, then we called them monster slippers. They were so bad <laughs> but it was and all the girls talked about it with their moms and stuff you know and I was like yeah that was my monster slippers it was great uh -huh. and so we don't have to stress about oh my cupcakes weren't the best the PTA thing we can just be and laugh and enjoy the stage that we're in I love oh. that thank that you I think it's important to open up and be honest about our own personal lives because I think that's when and where we connect with other women mm -hmm. yeah. for me anyway mm -hmm. absolutely well when we learned that you were coming to I even I even got online and looked at your website and looked at some of the short videos that you'd posted and one of the things that impacted me at the moment was when you were starting to overcommit and when you said that you're not finding joy in things anymore when it's time to take a step back and say mm -hmm. what are my priorities is this making me happy how do I how do I I set those priorities and with seven children mm -hmm. where where what was the turning point for you what did you 
what finally, I guess, was the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, and I, th I think it's a lot of different straws because I think like you'll get in a groove. It's almost like raising children and mm -hmm. you find you got the sticker chart that's working. You've got the chore mm -hmm. thing that's working, the dishwasher thing. And then six months later, you got to change it again. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think it's being able to say, evaluate and have a regular time with yourself. Sundays are great for me where I literally tell everyone, we try to make a treat and I say, okay, you guys go enjoy. And then I'm going to go take a half an hour upstairs and don't disturb. Mm -hmm. But just in the Evaluate what's working. I do a 3.1. What's working? What's not working? What do I need to do differently? And mm -hmm. I just choose something during the week that I'm like, okay, I know that didn't work last week. I got to shift that. And just recently, and that's what I was sharing in that Connie chat. I do these little one to two minute videos on mm -hmm. and have a YouTube channel. But on that, I shared about these boundaries that I could feel. I was getting asked to do lots and lots of things. And then I'd volunteer to substitute and volunteer. And then, then it became a regular thing. And so all of a sudden, what became a plate here and a plate there is swirling plates all the time. And and then I'm feeling compelled to, mm -hmm. to keep them up there. Mm -hmm. Then I had to step back and I'm like, I am feeling so stressed. And I had to step back and go, wait a second, which plates are mine? Which ones did I start out with that are my stewardship, that are my things? I'm a woman, wife, a mother. What does that look like for me right now? And what are these extra plates that somebody else has put on that I've allowed to stay? Mm -hmm. And then I just had to start handing the plates back. And I started saying those boundaries, and I call mm -hmm. it after boundary guilt. Because you set a boundary, you feel great. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you go, oh, I offended someone. Are they yeah. really upset? Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. it's so glorious when we as women give each other that gift up. I texted one lady, and right away, I mean, right, as, soon as, I, as soon as you said the goal to set a boundary expect that you're gonna have a challenge and probably three or four and I had like three right in a row mm -hmm. and I had to yeah. and I sent I said oh you're the happy recipient of my new goal setting <laughs> of how to set a boundary and I said I love and appreciate that you are gonna give me this space and she texted me back she goes way to go I need to do that better and so you will find oh, solidarity mm -hmm. you will find that and when someone does that you don't have to text back and be snippy fine I'll take care of it you can be nice you can say you know what I'm proud of you for setting a boundary then you go set a boundary. I'm going to go do the same thing and you go text mm -hmm. someone. What because what's great is that you're telling mm -hmm. them I'm I'm setting boundaries for myself to take mm -hmm. care of myself. Yes. I would appreciate that comment from any right. woman. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And don't you think that as women that we can feel and resonate with that yeah. and support it and then maybe even put that into our own life and say, oh, there's something I could do that with. Absolutely. That's so interesting because mm -hmm. I've never heard one, one woman ever tell me, I'm sorry, but I'm setting some boundaries. <laughs> right. You know what? What happened is years yeah. ago there was the carpool thing and that's where it started for me. Oh, you know the dreaded mm -hmm. carpool that turns into the, well, do you have gluten-free <laughs> snacks and do you have seatbelts for everybody? And you know what I mean? And after a while you're like, I am going to throw myself out the window. And so I said, you know what? And this one gal I talked to, she goes, well, what works for me is, and I went, bing, new favorite phrase. And I said, that's what I'm going to start doing from now on. What works for me is, and then we could it's work together. You 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 know. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and the two of us, we did a carpool and it rocked. It was awesome. So yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. So Connie, tell us, what about when there's that needed change? What can someone do? First of all, if a woman is starting to feel like, man, I need to shift something. I'm not sure what it is. First of all, give yourself permission to take time to figure that out. Okay. And even if it's, I have to barricade myself in the bathroom and I say, I'm not opening except for blood or broken bones and even that's optional. And so I have to take that time and say, I'm taking 15 minutes. I'm gonna sit through my soul. What is it that my body and soul are trying to tell me? So own that, own that yes, I'm getting a signal and I need to listen. And then after that, don't self-edit, just sift through and I do what's called a bubble brainstorm and it's so easy, so simple. I'm just gonna take this pen and show you right here. But what you do is you can just write down words that describe areas, three different areas. So first, I just say, just brainstorm any words. What kind of change do you wanna make? I wanna be happy, I wanna be confident, I wanna lose weight, I wanna be joyful. Just whatever it might be, write down those buzzwords mm -hmm. and then you can circle all the different words and that all relate to self. So maybe you'll do it in pink whatever you want to do. And you go, oh, all those words do, those are all self words. I want to be joyful, I want to be balanced, I want to be whatever. All of those ones, my healthy fit, those are all your self words, all about you and improving mm -hmm. and being. Then the next ones are maybe, I want to be a better communicator, I want to set more boundaries, I want to be able to have loving relationships, mm -hmm. and I want to be able to not be taken advantage of, or whatever. You're going to circle all those, and that comes under relationships. And then the last one is, I want to organize my time, I want to organize my home. That all comes under relationships. Then you can take that and you can put it, 
on little post-it notes next to your bed. You can go bigger and you can make it a cardstock thing. You can go even bigger and make it a foam board. Mm -hmm. I do a live board every year. I have them on my website. You can see different examples. I have different things on how to make one, but they're so great. You put your mission statement and then you put self, relationships, and life skills. Then you put pictures of your dreams and where you want to travel. Mm -hmm. And I've done that and I've been able to go places and do mm -hmm. things. It's been marvelous. So that all starts with one little step. That one little shift that you say, I'm gonna make a change. And if that's too overwhelming, then just do, I have three keys to change. In fact, it's a free download. If you wanna to go to ConnieSocal.com, it's a free download. You download, it gives you three quick things. If you do any one of them, you can start that whole change, what I call a catalyst. And once you start that little, ignite that little catalyst, ooh, the dominoes just start to fall. Because one change mm -hmm. starts another. And just okay. like that, a lady responds, and then you do, oh, this was easy. Oh, oh I, I can it. do that. Oh and it gosh, that is great. Hold that thought. Okay. We are loving this. We don't want to stop, but we need to take a little break. Stay with us for more.